Welcome to this session on creating spaces. In this session, we're going to lay out a number of loft units or spaces based on a predefined program. Once we have those spaces laid out, we could then actually use those to begin creating the walls for our three-dimensional model. So I'm going to start by going up to the Space tool on the Architectural tab, and I'll just select that. And I'm going to start by setting my space type to general. We'll use this as a starting point. We're actually going to create our own space type for the loft units. So once I have this set to general, I'm going to come over here and save this catalog item as. So essentially copying this one. And we're going to rename this. I'm going to use an asterisk just to sort it to the top of our list and then we'll call it loft unit and select OK. And you can see now our space type is set to loft unit. The next step would be to go ahead and set some of the defaults for that loft unit so that we don't have to come in here and reset the label or different attributes each time we place it. So again, I'm going to go to this pull down and this time I'm going to select edit catalog item. So here's the loft unit that we just created. So for instance, first thing I might want to change here is the label, and I'm going to call this loft unit. And then we'll actually use label, label two here on placement to label it as A, B, or C. We could predefine the ceiling height if we already know our typical ceiling height. I'm gonna put in 12 feet. Now the area program will want to input as we place it. Different units will have, have a different programmed area. So we do want to make sure this is ticked as editable. That means it's something that can be changed on placement. I'm also going to come in here and set this area actual as editable. This will allow us to put in an actual area when we place the space, which will then lock us to that area on placement. We'll be able to, to modify the space later and change the actual area, but at least on placement, it will match our programmed area. We could also predefine, for instance, our object classification. And we're going to use this 1365 private residential spaces. We might want to define a part definition. Now the part definition will control the symbology of the space shape, most importantly, the color. And so if I have different parts for different types of spaces, I can color code my plan drawings. So I'm going to change that to space residential, select OK. We could also input things like the site, the building, department, or floor if that's information we, we need to track on our spaces. So for instance, I'm going to put in as the building, gourmet at lofts, which happens to be the name of this project. We could also predefine things like finishes. So again, that we don't have to input that data as we place each space. So for instance, we're gonna set all the walls to paint one. And note that editable box is ticked on, which means if need be, these can be changed on placement. And we're going to set the wall base to be one. We'll set the floor material to concrete and the ceiling material to exposed. Again, all editable so they can be changed on placement if need be, but these will be the default attributes. We'll go ahead and save that data and close the catalog editor. And I'll just select the space tool again. 
This time when we select our loft unit space type, notice that these properties are filled out as we set them in the catalog editor. Now we're going to lay out three different types of loft units. We'll, we'll start with unit A, which will be 750 square feet or 75 square meter, meters. And we need six of those units on this floor. And we're going to lay them out here at the front of the building. So we've got six units right here. I'm going to come up to my placement ribbon and set my place by option to a draw rectangle. So we're simply going to draw a rectangle using two points. I am going to come in here and set my programmed area. So that was 750 square feet or 75 square meters. And I'm also going to put that in as my actual area. That's going to lock our rectangular shape so that we place it at 750 square feet. Now, once it's placed, we can use edit handles and modify it. And then the programmed area will remain 750, but the actual area might change. I'm also going to put in the space number here. We're going to start with 101. We're on the first floor. And this will be our first space. If you remember, we set our auto increment to 2, which means the next space we place will be 103 and then 105. So we're basically doing odd numbered spaces along the side of our corridor, which is going to run right here. And I'm going to put in this space label as A. So this will come out as loft unit A. So I'm going to start by Selecting the intersection of the grid here, B2, as the, the start point of my rectangle. So that's just a left click data point. And now notice as I'm drawing that rectangle, as I move my cursor basically along the x axis, it's resizing that rectangle so it always maintains that 750 square feet. And I'm just going to select any point along the next grid line. And that places our first space. Come up here and see that in the plan. We can see the space artifact, which shows up in the model, tells us this is loft unit A, number 101. The area right now is 750 square feet, and that matches our programmed area of 750 square feet. And I'm just going to continue to place spaces. Notice we're now on 103. And so again, I'm going to select the intersection of the grid lines and then select a point along the next grid line and just continue to place spaces until I've placed six spaces across the front of the building and that's the the first six spaces. Now we'll move to the back side of the building and place spaces and we have two different types remaining. B is going to be 550 square feet or 55 square meters and we need two of those so I think we'll put these on the corners of the building here. And then we need three at 350 square feet, rather small units, or 35 square meters. And we're going to put these in the, these three bays here, and we'll leave this area open next to the lift lobby. So I'm now going to change my space number manually and put in 102, because we're going to start doing even numbered spaces. I'm going to change my label here to B and we'll change our programmed area to 550 as well as the actual area. And then again, I'm going to start at the intersection of the grid line, and I want to actually come down to this grid line here. Notice though that it's looking for a point along the x-axis. That's the way the, the rectangle is defined. So I can control that by rotating my AccuDraw compass so that I, I get the axis that I want to define. So there's a simple shortcut key in, which is RZ, and that will rotate your compass 90 degrees. And once I've done that, I can now select this column line three in order to place the space that I want and get that rectangle at 550 square feet. So that's the first one. Notice my space number is now 104. I'm actually going to switch now to the space type C. And we're going to change this to 350. And now I'm going to come, I'm 
We're going to do this one in the plan. And we're going to start here at column line C4 and just come over to column line D. And then I actually have two more just like that, so we'll just keep going here. And then we just have the one additional one on the corner. This is going to be B again, and that's 550. And this time I'm going to start at this intersection, H4. But again, I want to be able to come down to this column line on column line 3. So again, I'm going to use that RZ to rotate the compass now. You can see it's it's needs to actually rotate several more times to get it oriented the way I would like. And I can just keep typing RZ and it will keep rotating the compass by 90 degrees until I get it rotated so that I can come down and select column line three and place that space. We'll go ahead and close our space dialog. And we can see now we've got all the spaces that we need laid out for this floor plate. We've got a basic fit. We know all the areas at this point are what's required by the program. But we can see if we kind of zoom in here, they don't all fit the architecture. We've got a little bit of a gap here. Um, we actually want to create some lounge areas at the end of the corridor here. So we may want to make some adjustments to the space. So in the next session, we'll look at how we can now modify the spaces once they're placed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.